um, welcome to everyone to this webinar, which is organized by STARS Association. And for people who doesn't know, the STARS stands Swiss Team for Autism Resources and Solutions. And uh, I'm your host, um, uh, Irina Shurov, who is a nutritional neuroscientist. And we try to organize those webinars where very interesting people and professionals share their experience and talking about the very interesting techniques, which can be very helpful for our children with neurological issues, conditions, problems, and so on. And today I've got the pleasure to present to you a very special guest. So it's a Dr. Laurie Gaudimier. She is a practicing neurofeedback in Geneva, but she is much more than just neurofeedback. <laughs> she's got quite a few specialities, and uh, so she's uh, got a degree in immunology. She's got a PhD in biomedical sciences. So she's uh, now also a, a professional. Uh, in osteopathy and uh, craniosacral therapy. Is that correct? That's, that's correct. <laughs> yeah. And she's also a book writer as well, so which is fascinating, I think. So, um, Laurie, uh, it's great to have you here. And can you just a little bit start to talk to us? What is a neurofeedback and how we can implement this technique to our children who are struggling to focus, to concentrate, who would like to improve the performance academically and just feel better in life and in terms of stress management and etc. So over to you. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Irina. Thanks for this great uh, introduction, for having me uh, with you in those uh, very interesting talks. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm practicing with neuro, neurofeedback, which is a way to read the brainwave with, a, with an EEG machine, like the same one you would find in an hospital. So we would be able to make, a not a diagnostic, because it's not considered as a diagnostic, but an evaluation of the brainwave and the functioning of the brain for children as for adults. I'm working with both, um, both populations. And based on what we, we evaluating on those uh, first um, session, we would have an idea on which area of the brain need to be trained. So the way this is working on the first session, we would do the a scan, which is the same for everyone. We're going to measure the prefrontal part of the brain, the mid prefrontal brain, which is related to the way uh, the individual is integrating emotions. Then we will have a soul reading of the cognitive processes and attention processes through the sensory motor cortex. We also would have an idea of the functioning of the occipital cortex, the back part of the brain, which would give us an idea of um, the visualization processes, the regeneration processes, and this has to do a lot with the alpha brain waves. Probably you heard about that. And say if we have a children with attention deficit. Most, uh, most symptoms will be seen in the frontal, frontal brain, the prefrontal brain, which will be slower than uh, a typical uh, um, children or, or, or someone with, with no attention deficit. Mm -hmm. And basically, when we have this, uh, this scan, uh, we will train the child on those uh, brain waves. So basically what can happen in the sessions, the, the, the following session is that the child is gonna watch a DVD, a movie, a cartoon, whatever he likes. And this movie will be bound to the, the readings of the brains. And every time it's working slower than what it should be, which explained partially is attention deficit, the movie is gonna stop. So that, that, that is as simple as that. It's kind of, uh, we call this operant conditioning. So mm -hmm. the brain obviously doesn't like that the movie stops, so it's going to try everything to increase the signal and have the movie place uh, um, non-stop, you know. And by doing so, it will increase the, the activity of the prefrontal cortex. So, of course, this is building on sessions, so we need a couple number of regular sessions so that those automatisms are built in the... In the, in the in the prefrontal cortex of the child. But most often we can see a correlation of those uh, brain waves rising up and changes in the behavior of the children, no matter if it's related to emotional processes or to attentional 
uh, processes. Mm -hmm. And once again, uh, this is working greatly for children with attention deficit. There, there are uh, strong evidences and uh, scientific validation. Actually, it's even... Uh, so how does neurotraining works? Basically, as you can see on this image here, we would have, uh, let's say here we look at the first uh, on the list, which is brain activity, so EEG. So we would have a signal which is recorded by this very small machine um, that is going to be bound to the computer and it will be linked to a movie. Let's say uh, if we set up a threshold, once again in the context of this attention deficit, the brain is working um, at 6 to 8 hertz, while it should be like higher up, like 12 to 15 hertz. So we will set a threshold to, of 12 hertz. Mm -hmm. And the movie, every time the, the, um, the signal is going to be lower than 12 hertz, the movie is going to stop. Mm -hmm. And this is how you get your uh, direct feedback. And you can act, I mean, not consciously. It's mostly unconscious, especially for the, the brain activity. But this is how this is working. And as you can see in the list, we can work exactly the same way on different parameters. The other one, they are uh, known under the umbrella of biofeedback. So this is everything that has to do with the um, physiological stress. For instance, the first one is muscle tension. So a lot of people, when they are stressed, they start to increase their muscle tension. But if they have the, um, a direct feedback mm -hmm. on and they see that their mu uh, muscle tension is going up, they're going to be able to act on that and to decrease that. So that's going to be the same principle also with the HRV, which is the heart rate variability, also known as uh, cardiac coherence, mm -hmm. and the breathing parameters. I mean, we know that we're breathing, but then it's, uh, it helps to see the way we're breathing on the screen to be able to act on that. And it works very great with children as well because it's very... It's quite easy to play with the breath, and then they quickly and visual see. as well, yes. Yeah? So exactly, it's, uh, as visual, nice to have that mm -hmm. picture have, of what's going have, on inside. Yeah, you can have very raw visual, like just waves bound mm -hmm. to your breath, like you you inhale, this is rising up, you exhale, this is going down. But mm -hmm. with children, you can you can also have like flowers opening with the inhale and then closing with the exhale. A lot of different things. You can have puzzles. You can have space rocket moving through the air. So this is kind of this is just a way that the child is not getting bored. It's getting interested in what he's doing. But he also has a direct feedback on how he can he can impact on his own physiology. Mm -hmm. We can measure all this with the same device, which is very portable, easy to take some, some different places. And um, so more about the, the, the EEG device. This is like very, very easy stuff. So it's just like those small uh, sensor that we put on the head. So that's, that's not a kid, but I work with kids as well. And um, through, through the, so you can see the presentation, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You know, it's very good because it's easy had to demonstrate um, the device. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, through, through, through those machines, you can see that there are different uh, electrodes that you see here. And those electrodes are simply recording brain activity. And we can measure different area of the brain. So what you can see here is the most uh, specific area that I measure in the, in the first evaluation that I call uh, neuroprofiling. So we measure the back of the brain, which is the occipital cortex, and will give us an idea of stress in someone, and also the regeneration processes, visualization as well. So this is giving us an idea so of um, people making alpha brainwave. Probably you heard about alpha brainwave, which are related to, to regeneration and so. Then we Excuse can- me, is it required awakening or, or sleeping as well? Sorry? The, the EEG. Yeah. Determination is it require a awake person or yeah yeah I do that doing on, both for, yeah. for sleeping no no I do that on a awake person like someone who is seated and mm -hmm. and it's just like it's very short one like the longest part that I do is to take the exact measurement to find the, ex the exact area of the of the head mm -hmm. so I have a little little cask that the person put on the head yeah. um, it's easier with with bald people as you can see <laughs> at yeah. least for dem demonstration purposes. But um, no, no, you do that on an awake person because the person has to be, so to do some cognitive tasks. Mm -hmm. 
exactly for this, this bubble that I'm showing now that we measure so the, the cognitive area of the brain, which is the central yeah. cortex. Yeah. Um, so we measure perception and sensory motor features. Mm -hmm. And we also measure the prefrontal cortex, so which is related mm -hmm. mostly to attention, concentration, and executive function, mostly related to organization skills and mm -hmm. memory as well. And a very important one, especially for children, is uh, actually not only for children, but is the, the, a part of the prefrontal cortex, which is directly related with the limbic system. And uh, it, it's called the, the sorry, some, some of my slides are in French, uh, but which is going to give us an idea of how the brain is integrating and, and processing emotions. So once again, this is the machine, very small device. I have, a, I have a computer and then the screen that the person really has a direct information about what is measured. So that's one of the biggest idea of neurofeedback is that you measure something, but you see it in real time. So you understand first how you function and how you can impact on this functioning. So I'm gonna show you how I use that for children, yes? Is the sensor and the software you are using is a, a kind of customized one you manufacture by yourself or it is no, 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 something no, no. It's from, generic it's from, you are using? No, no, it's from a company that is called mm -hmm. My Media, is, a, is a, from the Netherlands. Mm -hmm. And I've been trained by um, a, a research and formation institute in, uh, in Vevey, in Switzerland. Mm -hmm. So, and this is the, the really medical machine. I mean, that's the medical EEG, but then yeah. the machine is developed by this company, Mind Media. And they also make the games that I'm working with. Yeah. So they provide all this, uh, all this device. But the very, the big uh, interest of this device that, that I'm using and I'm presenting today is that you can do both biofeedback, mm -hmm. which is related to neurophysiology and um, yeah. breathing, heart rate variability, at the same time as you do uh, neurofeedback. So working with the brain waves. So you can play on parameters and then adapt to more people, especially children. Uh, can, I, can I just say, can we keep questions to the end and just uh, type them in chat? You have a chat at the bottom, so you can type your questions, then we can read them in order once we start Q&A. Otherwise, recording is not going to be very clean for people who are going to watch and listen yeah. afterwards, okay. okay? Thank you. Thank you. So basically, when you do this, this quick evaluation, like it, it will be like about 20 minutes for the whole thing. So you measure those, those uh, four areas that I'm showing you now. You get, uh, so these are like another representation of, of what I'm measuring. Um, so you get a report, like this very complicated report with numbers, and these are like uh, aligned to normalized databases. And from this, what I've been developing is a, is a kind of easier way to see the, the, the results, which would give us an idea of how the sensory motor cortex is working, how the occipital, so as you remember, is the one related to stress, and how the frontal, prefrontal cortex is working relative to especially the executive and emotional functions of the brain. And then the person received, like children like Adil, they receive this kind of um, report where they see this spider graph, which is kind of easier to see. Like for instance, uh, here you would see a person with like low scores into the, into the occipital green area. So someone with a lot of stress, so you can see the anxiety is, is, is quite low scores. And it's also someone, I, I hardly can see here, I need to move that, oh yeah. So it's someone with very good attention and cognitive process, but then like stressing a lot during performances. So you can see those different um, parameters. Mm -hmm. And once you have this, sorry, no, don't know. oh yeah, sorry. This is giving us an idea, a quick idea of the strength, weaknesses of someone, children like adults. And this is especially for me giving, giving a basis for neuro training. So meaning which area of the brain am I gonna train during, during further sessions? And that would be now- Where to focus, yes. Sorry? Where to focus, yeah. Yeah, to, to, so that it, it really makes something specific because there's some kind of neurofeedback where you work with the same program so it's one size uh, fits all. Here mm -hmm. I'm really working on, on, on the specific uh, person, like the specific mm -hmm. needs of the person. Mm -hmm. And if we take now the example of uh, attention deficit and autism, so our main challenges like would be here the, the some... I mean, that's what I see mostly in the, in the, in the practice, it would be mostly a restriction of the sensory motor cortex. We would have like uh, low scores with concentration and attention, 
Some children may present already with dyslexia, and dyspraxia, or impulsivity and hyperactivity. So that would be a typical example of, of a children with attention, strong attention deficit. So you can see here, like in the blue area, which is the sensory motor cortex, mm -hmm. the scores are quite low in terms of attention, cognition, and so perceptions. Uh, but there's a good dealing of stress in this example here. And the idea of what we're doing in, in coalescence is that we have different solutions to address uh, such, such, uh, such patterns, such children, for instance, through neurotraining that I'm going to show you right now, like using video games, uh, through work on the coordination and motricity, because I'm also a um, yoga teacher specialized for children. So I'm using some of the movement, some of like the, the combining with motricity. And so, as you said, I'm also working with mindfulness and relaxation, so specifics for children. And I'm using those tools. And together with you, Irina, I can be done some micronutrition solutions. So basically, the idea is to really make something that fits the need of, of the children, like the exact need of these children, which would be completely different than, than another one. And for instance, let's say we have a children with a prefrontal issue, like we have here, a sensory motor issue we would uh, place, again, the electrode for the training on the area that needs to be worked. And the children will look, for instance, here, uh, a video game, like it will have three different worms <laughs> that are gonna run, depending on the activity that the brain does. So you, the children doesn't really have to think about what it's doing. It's like, it's called condi uh, operant conditioning. So the brain receives like either a go or no go. So the worms are moving forward or not. And then the brain wants the, 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 the worms to move forward, so it will try everything. And as soon as it will try, it will find what makes the worms move forward. It will re redo those patterns. So it will train the new patterns. It will retrain naturally its, its function. So that's a typical um, video games I'm using with children, but we can use also uh, movies or music, different feedback. So the, the idea is that it really has a direct feedback that informs how the brain is working on this moment. And here there will be different uh, device that I'm using. Here you can see the example of a little girl working with um, this headband, which is measuring in direct the cerebral blood flow. So if you want to use the prefrontal cortex, you have to bring more blood to the, to, the, yes. to the brain. So here as well, you will see the direct response. So the brain is going to try anything so that the movie plays continually. And, and at some point, it will understand what it has to do and it will increase the blood flow naturally to the brain. And, uh, and, and children, can I just quickly ask, and children actually can see that change is happening in their brain yes. as well, yes? Mm -hmm. So they don't just see the play screen, but also they see... Yes, the as you can see on the first, on this, the graph with the worms, you can see that there's the bar. So I explain mm -hmm. them like the, what the bar are, and usually they ask for it. There are scores as well. You can see here there's points. So like they really wanted to make the points, uh, the points move. And here there's another example of my son being trained with both the headband and you see the belt and something on the finger, which is uh, making him also train the heart rate variability and the breath at the same time. So really combining all aspects. Mm -hmm. And here would be another, another example with a children with a, a issue of motricity. And then we use like those Swiss balls that they can sit on. So then it's kind of also challenging the balance at the same time. Okay. So that's, that's the way I'm working for, for attention deficit and autism in the office. That, that is quickly an image of progress tracking because I show you those graphs with colors and this will be, so it's not only children as you can see here from the age of the people, but this is just to show you the, the progress is that we can have in, in couple sessions. So here like it's between 10 and 30 sessions. Um, so this is the first one is someone who increased his creativity actually. So you can see that the blue, uh, the blue is filling up. So mm -hmm. it's someone who is making way more alpha brainwave and became way more creative after that. This is a children who was presenting some kind of anxiety and emotional uh, issues as well. And you can see like the orange bar is getting uh, filled with the green bar. And this is an athlete that was working with who was kind of um, performing on the, on, the, on the cognitive aspect. Actually, that's an athlete, but he has a so attention deficit. So he's an adult with attention deficit. And we got the so um, important progresses with this person. So this is just a, a last slide to show you, as I was saying, that we can also work with the breath. This is the biofeedback part. So the neurophysiology. And I usually combine both. 
And so the children would have the belt and he would kind of draw the, the breathing using his breath. He, he would draw the breath um, using the, the, the belt here. Um, and this is the different uh, scientific validated application of, of neuro training, like for performances and creativity, for attention deficit, as well as uh, cognitive performances. I work a lot of people with a lot of people showing uh, anxiety and burnout, uh, chronic pain as well. And this is, as you mentioned, I'm training now as an osteopath and craniosacral therapy. So that's an excellent combination of both approaches. And people with insomnia, we have great results as well. And uh, I work also with, uh, with uh, re-education and, and, uh, and trauma. Mm -hmm. So that's basically the, the image you see on the top. Mm -hmm. is, sorry, it's in French, but then that's, that's a big picture of what we're doing. So we have a, a specific and, and, and uh, individualized uh, training. And the person receives like in real time the, the um, a report of how his brain is working and then he can act on it and then at the same time receive a multimedia feedback that kind of makes it more interesting than just like seeing uh, lines or graphs or, okay. or... So here we are, I try to make it short so then it, I, I spend more time on your question. Maybe I can leave this slide on while we're talking or we can remove the, the screen, it's up to you. Okay, great. So uh, I think it's very nice observation. What what is clear? So we don't have uh, any questions typed. Okay, so we just uh, open panel for questions now. So if if you know, I can just summarize. So this, this method is very uh, uh, can have a very broad application. Mm -hmm. What is the the beauty of that? So you dealing not just with the brain as an isolated organ; it's also the part of the body, and you actually train the brain to respect and behave accordingly. The the whole physiology in the body, mm -hmm. and uh, you also uh, identify the area where to focus based on very sort of individual needs exactly. and. Uh, what is, I think, very good, and, and when, when you tried that method on me, I found it very fascinating, very stressed, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so what you actually, you can see how that measurement's changing. Yeah. So you can really identify your potential, your strengths, and how far you can go. This gives you lots of power to yes. control to yes. And, and on, this, on, this, um, on this point, what is very interesting also is for some children, which are kind of the, at the border of uh, having this attention deficit, but, but no name or no diagnosis is put on that, it's important for them to see so that the, there's a, so it's not that they're not making efforts, it's that the brain is also having a kind of natural switch toward making more slow brain waves. So they also feel, I mean, they also understand that there's, there's a kind of dysfunctioning of the brain is not them not making efforts is also the brain that is kind of uh, just not regulated the proper way. Yeah. And very quickly the brain understand because the brain is not stupid. When he learns to do something which is better for it, he will yeah. do it. So and you it just very, need to show yeah. the, 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 the way. That's what we do with neurofeedback. We show the way. It's kind of, we show the way toward autoregulation. I think it's very powerful because you can clearly see actually how the brain operates. So for example, with other clinical tests, you can see the other parameters and it's very powerful already. But with the brain, we don't really understand how it's working. So when yeah. you can see actual certain biomarkers, you can measure and change. I think it gives you so much power, as I said. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, um, guys, who have a questions? Please let's let's uh, talk to Lori. You <laughs> yes. can unmute and ask. <laughs> yeah, sorry. So I have a quick question, actually. So you mentioned about neuro profiling report mm -hmm. based on the the sensors and all the the kinds of yeah the receiver uh, and the the software you are creating a report. Uh, I I just think like it is a taking some snapshots from the brain activities and body condition. And this snapshot is giving you a kind of guideline or direction where, where, where is the area that you are supposed to work on it. Is yes. that correct? It's totally so correct. since it is taking the snapshot, how di different is changed from one period of time to another? Is it uh, yeah, a that's good a guidance to give us a direction? 
That's is a very good certain? question. Um, so I've been doing a lot of those profilings now, and there are some some of the some of the um, tendencies of someone would would remain. But of course, if someone has le less sleep the night before he comes, or 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 any medication, this will affect the the brain waves and the results, of course. But then the general tendency of someone, we, we, we keep that. We keep that from, from one time to the other. Is, is that answering your question? David? Yes, I mean, I, I would like to understand if you make sufficient modeling uh, for one single person during mm -hmm. different periods of time to see and verify that if these profiles are matching each other or a small deviation is still acceptable level. Yeah, or... there's, there's still small deviation, of course. Mm -hmm. like, uh, as I was saying, like the, the quality of your sleep the couple nights before, or if you're in a stress mm -hmm. period, or this is mentioned. So I, I put some notes into the report that the people are receiving. So actually, it's a double yeah. that they yeah. receive. And there's a note mentioning that, of course, what mm -hmm. uh, coffee will act as well on the brain waves, as I was saying, medication, sleep. But what I was saying is that the, the, the biggest tendency of someone will remain. Mm -hmm. Like if okay. someone, I, I mean, there's if, if, if someone is, is stressed because he doesn't make alpha wave because of uh, an emotional, emotional trauma or it, it's going to be hard to change. It's not like mm -hmm. it's going to come back uh, after he did a good meditation session. Maybe the, 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 the numbers will move, but mm -hmm. those scores that I, that, I, that I depicted into this uh, graph, this spider graph that you see, they are based on ranges. It's not like just numbers. It's really ranges of numbers. So there's huge variation. Um, but but we, we, we're taking this into account into those, those representations. Mm -hmm. So when you are taking this uh, measurement, are you preferring a certain period of time? Are you like just waking up and or no, during the no, day? No, not really. The only thing is that I'm doing those uh, evaluation every 10 sessions. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to have the people come at about the same time. So usually patients, I see them on the, more or less the same time. This mm -hmm. is irritating. Maybe you're dancing, but you're making lots of noise. Oh, yeah. Oh, I am sorry. I'm <laughs> so <laughs> dancing. <laughs> Who is dancing? <laughs> sorry, I unmuted myself and wasn't aware. And my daughter jumping, making noise. And I <laughs> <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah. I was not dancing, huh? <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, Denise, to, 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 to answer your question, I'm trying at least the session, like the, the evaluation, mm -hmm. evaluation session, sorry, to make them at about the same time. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. of course it would be a challenge to do that. So children, I mostly see them on Wednesdays. And um, so when I do evaluation, it would, be, it, would be, it would be more or less at the same time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I'm doing as best as I can with everyone's oh, agenda so and my, <laughs> mine. But mm -hmm. of course we need to have some, uh, some uh, yeah some standardized way to do it but mm -hmm. it, it's 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 not a diagnostic tool uh, mm -hmm. just that's something i want to precise and that it's precise in all my reports as well i'm not putting any diagnostics with this i'm just giving um exactly as you mentioned a snapshot of the brain mm -hmm. and which can uh, uh, support some of the symptoms that the patient is coming with and especially giving us some direction to work like mm -hmm. on, on the graph you see on the screen, this person yeah. I would work in especially uh, the sensory motor and the perceptive functions mm -hmm. more than training against, I mean, to, to, to fight against anxiety. Mm -hmm. And, and sure. I think what is more important to see the results and that correlation of improvement of symptoms and what exactly. actually you can monitor. Yes. I remember uh, you were to telling me about the girl who you measured the, the same progress. She was on Ritalin and without Ritalin, you could do it with the neurofeedback training. So for mm -hmm. me, that's what, you know, very, very yeah. important. You can achieve with this yeah. similar effect as yeah. we can do with the drugs. Yeah. yeah. Something that is quite important to know as well is that um, what this, once again, this is not a diagnostic tool, but let's say if we have a children like the one, the profile you see now was like an attention deficit, but no hyper anxiety, these mm -hmm. children would support the Ritalin, which is, a, so you know that Ritalin is a psychostimulant. But if you take the same profile of a children and it's, it's green because the scores in anxiety are low, 
these children will have a bad reaction to, to psychostimulant. See what mm -hmm. I mean? So I'm not yeah. taking any, any decision on the drug because this is not my job, but I'm yeah. collaborating also with, um, with um, mm -hmm. pa pa pediatrician and psychiatrist to, to, to sometimes show them that maybe for children who doesn't uh, support Ritalin or Concerta, there would, be, there would be one explanation is that the children is already having high level of, of anxiety and won't, won't uh, support mm -hmm. the psychostimulant. And I think this is also, you, you can, this is where we, you can give a feedback to parents. It's, yes. it's up to them to feed this information to their medical doctor. Mm -hmm. At least they can maybe together make a solution. Exactly. So change mm -hmm. medication or, you know, something else, you know. There yeah. is always a uh, plan B. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, I would like to ask a question. If, mm -hmm. Sure. Please. Uh, for example, if some, if, some child comes to you or some parent comes to you with child with ADHD or mm -hmm. autism, and you're going through the first assessment stage, how many sessions would you recommend to go through for, to see actual results, to, to start to see results and to, let's say, what is maybe your standard package for maybe five or 10 or 15 yeah. sessions? What would you recommend? Sure, that's, that's of course the most frequent and the most tricky question because this will all depend on, on the brain, on the permissivity. Can you say that? If the brain is permissive to the treatment, to the training. How responsive brain to... Yeah, yeah. And, and also, um, as, I, I, as I was showing you, I'm using different modalities. So I will give some, some, the children and the parents some exercise at home to do and to practice with relaxations and and that's that's why the book is coming from because the book is going to be a tool that the parents can also follow at home it's going to be some uh, uh guidelines through inside the book right mm -hmm. um so so depending on how the the the, the children and the parents are going to be in the treatment the results are going to be different but mm -hmm. i usually start to have some some people reporting uh changes after five or six sessions already it would be maybe a children is more uh, focused or is less uh, agitated, less, um, uh, how do you say, dissipate, uh, uh, less agitated in school, for instance, or is having less uh, quick reaction, quick emotional reaction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, that would be about, most often, I, most often that I hear report from patients would be like around, yeah, five, six sessions. But I usually do the first evaluation after 10 sessions. And, and of course, we're talking here about the training, like, like you would go to the gym and train your muscles. So mm -hmm. the more, the better, because you want to break some old automatism and make some new automatism. So yes. it, 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 that in any case, it, it's not a standalone therapy. It has to go together with uh, changing lifestyles, changing bad habits and, and, you know, stopping like for, for all the children, stopping the the phone before going to sleep, all those kind of stuff that are impacting the attention and the sensory motor cortex that we are targeting here. So if I work hand in hand with the parents, with the children, then the progress are faster, of course. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for sure. sharing. And I think this is, again, this is one of the techniques and probably, you know, lots of techniques where the parents welcomed to watch Mm -hmm. It's not just something you bring child and go for shopping. No, no, no. The Lori really engage you as much as she can to explain, to show that you can learn, observe, mm -hmm. and take that with you at home yes. and practice with your child. Benefit for yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, increase the value from these sessions as much as possible so we, you can uh, achieve the results as soon mm -hmm. as possible. Yeah. Uh, so, and I think that's where, you know, the, the, you know, the, the great understanding of Lori as a holistic professional is. Mm -hmm. So um, that's why I like her very much. <laughs> <laughs> and, and maybe one point to, to, to bring it here in terms of number of sessions is that some of the complementary insurances in Switzerland are covering biofeedback. And, and I'm, doing, I'm using biofeedback, that's why you see here with the little boy on the red chair, with my son, by the way. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm very often combining biofeedback. So once again, biofeedback is everything but the brain waves. So I'm, I'm all the time combining both. So making some, some 
on one point is kind of strengthening the, the, the therapy, but it also makes that uh, some of the insurance will cover uh, the biofeedback part of it. Okay. So n unfortunately, not many. So it's something you need to ask before to your, to your insurance. Uh, but I'm, 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 I have the ASCA agreement and, um, and the biofeedback therapy is, is, uh, mm -hmm. is, is uh, covered by some of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's oh, very useful to know. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Is it, yeah. Is it that uh, covers by normal insurance or complementary insurance? Complementary. 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 This is part of the uh, com complementary and alternative uh, medicine. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it's covered by those. Okay. Any more questions, guys? You can First, unmute from the discussion, I understand the book is also pointing out or m mentioning about this tool and method. No, the book, the book doesn't talk about neurofeedback. It's really so mm -hmm. it's a book about um, uh, explaining ch chakras, so yoga mm -hmm. chakras to children, but to their parents together. So there's an introduction about what really are chakras and how, how do they correspond in the, in the more scientific world. And mm -hmm. then each chakra is, uh, is um, illustrated by a little tale and then little exercises that the parents can do with the children. Mm -hmm. uh, so I talk a lot about mind. It's more a mindfulness book. I don't talk about neurofeedback at all. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more oriented toward yoga. Uh, but yoga. it's a part of training uh, your yeah. brain and body to relax and be present, which is a, like a foundation step for neurofeedback. If you yes, mm -hmm. but what I really wanted through this book is to have parents and children together. So it's not a children's book, it's not an adult or parent's book, it's a book for the family. And that's really my intention with that is to, it's the same thing as I was telling you, I need to have the parents, you know, playing in, in the yeah. same in the same game as, as me as uh, the children so we all together so the book is uh, the book is kind of illustrated mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so for the both product the the techniques for chakras and the this neuro, neurofeedback tool do you have any youtube or some videos that you are giving some insight that i can share uh with, we did with one with mm -hmm. with Irina actually uh, that's the only video I have so far. The book is really like a um, completely work in progress. So it's not, mm -hmm. it, I just have a prototype at the moment, but it's, it's on, on very quick progress. So by the summer, I hope it will be ready. Okay. So I will include that into my website with some mm -hmm. pictures and, uh, and where to find it because I'm going to self, uh, self edit and self publish it. Uh, but then all those information will be linked to, 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 to stars for Irina. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and 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 yeah, I have also my uh, coalescence uh, web page as well as a Facebook page. So Facebook page, I'm gonna update that very soon mm -hmm. with all those informations. Yeah, great. We're looking forward to it. Sure. Any and I also have like flyers, so those flyers that I can mm -hmm. send if you if you if you contact me. So it's English and French. Mm -hmm. uh, I can send you a couple of flyers if you're interested as well. Okay. I think the beauty of this product or, or the two is it is very difficult to find some uh, real-time data that can show the reaction or diagnosis immediately because every step mm -hmm. of this process you know it is taking ages times and this is just showing that what is available and yeah. very easy yeah mm -hmm. so and it is very tangible measurable something that yeah. give you a di i mean kinds of direction of course mm -hmm. it can be discussed if this there can be different ways to improve different areas. Mm -hmm. At least it can be like a roadmap where, where are the areas that we can improve. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I like to call that sometimes um, computer assisted meditation. <laughs> <laughs> because that, you, do the, you yeah. do the same work, but then sometimes, especially for children, meditation is quite, is quite another word, right? It's very difficult to just yeah. put the children into medi meditation, but then if you, mm -hmm. If you use those those uh, those funny way to get into it, or here they have a movie, and then the brain does the same as what it does into meditation, which is to slow down. I mean, that's the biggest mm -hmm. picture. Of course, the frontal brain you don't want the don't want it to slow down, but uh, through meditation we act on the brain waves, and and this is just faster than meditation because you get an immediate instant feedback. So mm -hmm. when you do meditation and you start to think about your shopping list, or no one is telling you that you're doing that. So you don't have feedback. So that's exactly the yeah. 
the, the strength of neurofeedback and biofeedback. How often, Lori, you uh, normally advise uh, children to come? So once a week, twice a week, what is the optimal? Uh... So usually it's once a week because that's the easiest to, 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 to have into the, their own program and into their life, like life of the parents as well. Mm -hmm. I don't want people to arrive in a rush because they don't have time or there are traffic. Mm -hmm. So once a week is ideal. And I am starting to develop also some little uh, summer sessions. Like I've been working with some children that I could see only during holidays. Mm -hmm. and, and I see them four, four days a week. Mm -hmm. with, uh, but here I do less neurofeedback uh, and I just mix more with uh, mindfulness and give them some tools that I can use afterwards. Mm -hmm. But the fact, I, I feel that the fact of seeing them like uh, uh, almost every day on a week is, uh, is uh, creating stronger pattern because they really realize how it helps them mm -hmm. and they progress but then usually I work with the at the moment I work mostly with children once a week mm -hmm. and then I start to space out when we see that the, the results are are here and then like mm -hmm. they kind of enforce mm -hmm. me that they they don't 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 go back mm -hmm. I mean it's not just one thing yeah uh, they really improve yeah we start to space out the session and then mm -hmm. I mean I can I can see them like once a month just as just as a kind of um, maintain uh, so maintain, uh, yeah, exactly exactly yeah 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 so it's like with any habits with the building new um you know um neurological pathway in, this in, is the basis of neuroplasticity nourish it and then just try to maintain it make sure it's there exactly you you're making new pathway and then you reinforce them and yeah. you need time to do that it's exactly the same thing that what you do at the gym because at the end of the day what you do at the gym gym is training your neuromuscular yeah. uh, pathway so you yeah. if you go once you will feel good but then the muscle will kind of shrink after yeah. a week yeah. if you go more regularly then the muscle yeah. will be will be here yes. but in terms of of uh, brain pathway since the, we are talking now about pattern that you are using every day once you change you don't go back right and right yeah important. because there it's established so exactly yeah exactly. so did did you notice any sort of a correlation between um the you know the results you achieve and sensory issues in, in children uh improvement and sensory uh, um yeah i've been reports of my parents maybe yeah 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 some 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 i mean sensory would be more on the the most striking that I, that I've been as report from parents is the, um, the impulsivity. Mm -hmm. they, they, it, it seems that they, they manage more to step back from something that is triggering them. And that's something that I see also with, uh, with adults a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, when there's this thing that is pushing your buttons and, mm -hmm. and, and you can't handle that, uh, people are reporting very quickly uh, uh, that they manage to make a distance with that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is for those who meditate, quite similar to the first... Um, the first benefits that you find from meditation yeah yeah, um, yeah on the sensory maybe more uh, um, yeah it's mostly this it's mostly okay. this no but this is huge isn't it so yeah. it's a, it's a part of the stress control yeah 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 T totally okay great great any more questions guys guys so in terms of the, the duration of this period, I mean, the diagnosis and discussion afterwards for the session, how long does it take? For, the, for treatment, you mean? Yes, for, for one, one, one day of period. One, that one session? Just, yeah, one session, including, I mean, the period that you are making the diagnosis and afterwards to discuss about the result. So the usually I, I see, the, I see the, the, the children and the parents, because now we're talking about children, I see them the first time for one hour. So I take the time to do the diagnostic, then we have some questionnaire, then, then I show them the, the device for the breath and they draw their breath so that I can see how, how, um, how they understand this and like it because I, 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 I use video games for that. And uh, we discuss the results together already from the first session. And then the, the, I provide them with the reports, I mean, best three, four days after. It depends on, on the time that I have to make it. But usually I'm mm -hmm. trying to have it quite fast. So in, mm -hmm. right after they did the session. And then preferably... Sorry, is it still requiring your intervention in terms of preparation of the report? You need to make well, some... She needs to collect the data and make the... Yes. 
Uh, I'm, I'm making the so I, I'm, there, there's a software on, 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 on my computer that is calculating the data mm -hmm. and I made so those graphs that you see I made them myself so I made some specific macros to 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 have that so yes I need to analyze the results not like we can okay. so is, we start to have um, more and more wearables now that mm -hmm. are that are kind of cask that you can wear and some are working i mean some are in development now so i'm waiting for i was i was part of a kickstarter uh, campaign so i'm mm -hmm. waiting for one of those tools because hopefully i mean my idea is not to see patient every week but to give them tools that they can work on it at home and mm -hmm. we can do another evaluation because this kind of evaluation i'm the only one to make them so mm -hmm. i see them regularly with those uh, and see mm -hmm. how they 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 um they evolve, they develop, they progress. Mm -hmm. but ideally, yes. Uh, and I think it's science that is coming at the moment is to have like those wearables that you can train at home. Mm -hmm. and yeah. That would be the best. And, and Maybe they uh, will connect some apps and with... Uh, yeah, yeah. And I would prefer children, you know, to watch TV if they have like something that is making them watch TV with the, the response of their brainwave yeah. rather than just watching TV <laughs> or, or yeah. video games. So... Yeah. But that's that's in progress. I mean, there's a lot and lot of startup and companies developing those tools now. So I'm sure, like in about less than than five years, we would have those tools and can work at mm home. -hmm. I'm I'm using different devices that I also so it's more now for adults. But I'm having a couple of devices that help to train alpha brainwave that I um, that I can also lend to patients during sessions. Mm -hmm. and, and we have good results with that. So once again, I'm really trying to adapt uh, each treatment to the person and to give a different option that would fit the, mm -hmm. the needs of this person. So that's mm -hmm. why I'm, I'm coming with different tools and then uh, working a lot, like networking a lot with, with people like Irina and, and doing great mm -hmm. jobs. So we, we all come with the, the, same, the same idea but mm -hmm. different approaches. And I think, I mean, I, I think especially for, I mean, I've been studying autism, development of, of yeah. autism and, and synapses in, in the autistic brains. And mm -hmm. honestly, there's not one therapy that, I mean, it's so complex. There's one, no yeah. one drug, no one therapy that would work. And, yeah. Yeah. and that's, well, one. that's why it's the beauty that we can, you know, massage the brain and the body stimulated from mm -hmm. different and they work together. I mean, it's not you cannot just treat the brain by one medication and, and ask the body to change. They work together. So they, they, that's what we're trying to do here. So really, that's why I'm working with those balloons that you see here that the children sit it on or some, you know, this kind of kinetic sand or those things because the brain works with the body. Yeah, yeah. And that's also something that mm -hmm. I'm now developing through craniosacral therapy. Uh, this is also work on progress, but that's that there's very mm -hmm. excellent results also in terms yeah. of um, mm -hmm. helping children deal with stress and balance of the autonomic nervous system using uh, uh, cranial osteopathy. My question is, when are you going to find the time to practice all you know? That <laughs> I do, I do, but <laughs> to get to your cabinet very soon. <laughs> Yeah. No, no, the time, I mean, you know, the time is a challenge for me, but then we always find it because I'm, I'm yeah. just like, I, I love what I do and I love to share that because this has helped me a lot and, yeah. and I yeah. want to, I want to transmit that. So, yeah. 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 Uh, I've got a question. Do you know which uh, neurotransmitters actually affected by neurofeedback? There are some research on this. Uh, I mean, I would say... Mm, most of serotonin dopamine and dopamine i mean my guess would be especially for dopamine because you get yeah. this reward system going on and then you get like we're trying so i'm having a yeah. big library of movies and cartoons and then the children is happy to watch this yeah. cartoon so it's happy when the cartoon works so i would really like if i would bet on one it would be dopamine Dopamine probably is the best yeah, yeah. but then once again, here we're talking more about uh, the networks yes. than neurotransmitter per se. So I think that neurotransmitter would be more resultant of the networks getting of course, stronger. Of course. of course, it's not it's not yeah. the, the prime sort of a focus, but is yeah. a result of that. Yeah, uh, yeah, we can see the. But that would be very interesting yeah. to go deeper into those research to see which one. But of course, it would be different. Like like. Neurofeedback is a broad field, so some people would use different uh, protocols. So I, I have a great um, protocol book that that mm -hmm. uh, that standardizes a bit what is used mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. like people do a little bit 
anything with it. So, mm -hmm. so that's why I'm really happy to work with this machine and to start from an evaluation. It's not that I'm not, we're not doing a shot in the dark and then do the same, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the same neurofeedback treatment to everyone but we're really trying to think about what would fit the person. Yeah, yeah, no, right. the personalized approach is very, very important. Right? Yeah, and I think that's, that's, that's our future. I mean, that's the future mm -hmm. of, of, of any medicine, yeah. like traditional medicine. like Any um, approach, I mean, in anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, totally. Okay, great. Do we have more questions? Claire, are you there? Claire? I don't know, maybe not. Any more questions, guys? Olga? All clear? Can I have one more question? Yes, go on. <laughs> so, uh, based on your database or the number of people or kids you, you, you tested, is it possible to just look at the one of the diagram and saying that this kid is different or deviated from normal situation? In terms of the, the neuro profiling, you mean? Yes, the exactly. Um, yes, you would see based on the on the on the deviation, especially of the, the functioning of the sensory motor cortex. Mm -hmm. So that what where you look, especially for the attention and cognition, and mm -hmm. uh, here you would have an idea of mm -hmm. if it's really far from 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 the the the, stand, the standard values or not. Mm -hmm. It would give you an idea of how. Um, how strong is the condition, I would say. I mean, I'm saying that because I've been working with children, uh, yeah. the same children with and without Ritalin. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we saw differences, of course. Like we see that, of course, the, the, the Ritalin is, is making this better. Mm -hmm. uh, but then, yeah, my pride with that was that uh, after the children, we moved Ritalin, not on my advice, because once again, this is not my, my, my job or my decision to make. Yeah. Yeah. But the children stopped retaliating and we keep on training him and he was like getting to the same result after some sessions, of course, as, mm -hmm. as what he was doing with retaliating. Mm -hmm. And there have been actually some studies um, that show that uh, uh, treatment with retaliating and treatment with neurofeedback were, um, were, were having the same results. Compatible. Mm -hmm. we're, exactly. We're not better, yeah. but then, I mean, neurofeedback is not better than Ritalin, but then it's giving you similar results with long sessions. Without side effects. Without, without the side effects, exactly. Yeah. So that's a a, a very linked question to this one. What is the minimum age you are? Uh, that's an excellent I mean, question. I start, I start with children. I mean, with neurofeedback, I start after eight. Eight because, years old. Yeah, because before not eight, eight months. <laughs> no, not. You know what? Because, because <laughs> until eight, the children is having an, a, a majority of theta brainwave, very slow brainwaves, mm -hmm. and uh, I wouldn't train them to do faster, um, faster brainwave because then you might impact the, the proper development of the brain. But I work with uh, younger children mostly with mindfulness and okay. yoga, actually yoga-based approaches. Yeah, so yeah, some yeah. of the of the exercise you will find is in the book is things that I'm doing like on a regular basis with children. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, uh, younger than eight. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Good. And for this, like, I'm really looking forward to offer the craniosacral treatment because this you can go to and like yeah. from eight months and even earlier. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and, and we have so excellent results here in, in uh, and probably then younger than better even because the skull is so soft and you yes, have much yes. better sort yeah. of freedom to manipulate and identify the little issues which definitely. can further yeah, or really be much more difficult to correct but can yeah. cause lots of problems. Yeah, the, the connection of the content of the brain which is the skull and all the membranes around the, mm -hmm. yeah. the, the brain and the brain function themselves is yeah. mm -hmm. like it's 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 exactly the reason why we're saying i'm i'm, a, I'm a always i mean a non-stopping student because i want to study that the, the connection is just so so impressive and then like having the tools is just making it great to to, to mm -hmm. test and once again to offer a different solution to um I think on this new solution, we're going to organize another micro class. Yes, <laughs> I found it. And we will be faster on the Zoom this time. Yeah, now yeah. we know how it works and it looks very efficient once we uh, connect and join on time and know which buttons to press. Sure. So, uh, but I think now we ran out of time. It's eight. Um, and uh, if 
people missed some part of that or something, we're going to send the link for video. Um, and I'm also going to um, distribute the um, Lori's contact details if you want. Yeah, I'm going to put it um, back. Contact and organize the assessment and visit her in her. Uh, yeah, so you have here the website. Yes, you can see it here in her office in Geneva. And you said you're going to move close to the station soon. We yes, from July on, I will be at uh, Gare Cornavin. Yeah, so that would be much more convenient. Yes, uh, just in people. front of the train station, in front of the Starbucks of the train station. Brilliant, very convenient place. But it doesn't mean the parents going to Starbucks. <laughs> no, no, they stay with us. <laughs> they work with us. All right. Okay, Lori, thank you so mm -hmm. much. Sure, uh, my pleasure. Your Thanks for having wisdom, me. for your experience, for your wish to help uh, all of us and share your knowledge. So um, I'm sure it would wake up the lots of interest and follow-ups. So uh, thanks again, and um, I'll I'll see you soon. Sure, yeah, and thanks thank for you very much. Have a yeah, good thank evening. Thank you, Ina and Olga, for all what you do. Thank, thank you. Thanks a lot. Mm -hmm. Have a good evening, everyone. Bye. Bye.